job virtuosity actually comes from um, how fast and expressive you can imagine, how fast and expressive you can feel the music while playing. And but again, guys, by feeling, I mean not some abstract feelings. Exactly how you imagine notes, how you intonate, how you using your phrasing, how using your dynamics, harmony. That's where virtuosity comes from. And if you manage to do this in the fast tempos, then your hands, um, after some time, they will adjust. So. <laughs> There's nothing right or wrong with looking at your hands while playing. Um, I myself always look somewhere where they are, I think, where I play, but uh, that's really not about it, <laughs> where you, you know, where you look while playing. Uh, the question you would rather want to ask yourself is where you really focus your attention while playing, because uh, there is a huge difference between believing that you control accuracy while playing by uh, you know better eyes or hand control by some uh, maybe compulsive tension in your body uh, which only as you know brings more tension to your hands and, and it's absolutely useless uh, it actually will prevent you from playing in fast tempos and controlling precision uh, basically of precision of your playing with your inner sensations and that's what we're going to talk about today and that's uh, the key to effortless and virtuosic playing. Uh, and if you think about, let's say, blind pianists or uh, violinists, any you know, string instrument players, they definitely trust more their inner sensations while playing. I mean, there is no way to check, right? Especially if you're blind. So the answer is probably an ability to feel different distances in between notes with your vocal cords, with your internal singing. Uh, forgetting that hands are responsible for playing, uh, letting them just express your inner sensations. They simply you know, follow the line that you already feel inside. And um, uh, for this video, I decided to focus on descending arpeggios. I think they're just the best way to illustrate what I'm going to talk about. And uh, firstly, guys, if you go, just have to say, if your goal is to play arpeggios fast, you should forget about your childhood habits of playing arpeggios, connecting notes. You know what I mean? Constantly twisting your wrist, twisting your elbow, crossing your fingers. So don't do that. It's maybe good for the first grade in school, but if you want to really play uh, some virtuosic pieces, uh, you should kind of change something, because playing this is not the answer. Um, so instead, you might want to try a different way. Uh, basically, four steps. Four steps we're going to talk about today. Uh, first, keep the same shape of your wrist. So if you go down, make sure that your wrist does not, you know, pull back and you always keep the same basically this left side shape of your wrist then move your elbow precisely on every G in the octave just always feel it making one line stroke as you can see and if you go up and away it's gonna be E step three um, basically most important here uh, let go your thumb uh, without trying to connect notes so because you see if you try to connect notes you will have to twist your wrist and that will prevent you from playing creating tension in hands so instead you should do this just let go um, it's just that simple and if you play in fast tempos Nobody will notice that you may be not playing legato. Of course, if you need to play legato, you might want to use more weight and at the end. But uh, don't be afraid to let go of the notes. That's the point. And lastly, you have to try to keep your hand while doing all of this you know, acrobatic uh, thing. You have to try to keep your hand absolutely light and, and in a way empty and weak. So. Uh, this last step usually a problem with students as they always tend to, you know, 
kind of afraid you know to miss the G between C and G this jump and feeling this um, insecurity in the titular well they would start adjusting hand movements and focusing on hand movements rather than on inner sensation and uh, that always creates something like this you know. You know, it only locks up your muscles even, even more than you know, this way of play. So you'd rather play this than this. Uh, so um, the solution to actually unlock your muscles here is to play with absolutely weak hand and yet very precisely is to switch attention to intonation and especially to, uh, to the intonation of that particular distance between C and G. And this is what you could do in this case. Uh, you will need to focus on your inner sensations, which are intonation and musical speech. Uh, and the link to those principles will be in the description below, I'm just saying. Again, uh, we would need four steps to, to make here. So first is singing out loud with intonation, with good resistance, with good glissando between notes. Especially pay attention in your problem uh, interval, CG. optional but if you manage to do this that will increase accuracy that's for sure uh, singing with musical speech feeling emotion meaning of each interval so we're basically having here third and just one fourth Sing out loud and play, keeping your hand absolutely light. So now, guys, we have to focus attention completely on inner sensations here and trusting that our hand will follow. And step four, basically doing the same but internally. that now you have something else uh, than just rather you know outer movements that you can trust to which are your internal singing and uh, just remember that this is how you control accuracy while playing and that's basically it so when you need to speed up you simply speed up your inner singing and uh, probably elbow movements just keep in mind every G you have to move it more quickly and let your hand just follow so it becomes very effortless I think and um, you know if for example uh, your playing becomes not even um, I mean that's obvious if you have a jump usually the first note after jump tends to stand up <laughs> So you have to use your imagination to control your tone and uh, you can use again any temper that allows you to stretch the notes, allows you to feel glissando between notes. Um, I always use sound texture, sometimes you can use violins. Uh, but make sure that the point of this, you make every note even first in your mind. That's the key, you know, and that's the key with every unevenness that you're playing. Uh, you have to make sure that you can imagine notes sequentially, <laughs> absolutely even, and then and again, your your fingers are following. You simply express what is on your mind. And besides uh, imagination, you can always use phrasing in your intonation to, you know, to gradate arm weight while playing to create again natural smooth lines. So you know, coming more to E G E C interval rather than to G. You know. imagination movements phrasing I explain um, very detail in very details um, in my very first tutorial and if you're interested I'll post the link in the description below 
So the same goes with our left hand. Um, when you go down, you move elbow on G and simply let go your thumb. Don't try to connect this way, especially if your hand is not wide enough. So simply let go. And again, trust, trust, trust that you control uh, accuracy with your inner sensation rather with your fingers and eyes. When we speed up, just think. <laughs> when we speed up, we are unable to actually control um, anything with our eyes or hands. This is too fast. Yet, in the inner sensation, we can speed up uh, very quickly. So, that's really the key. Okay, anyways, uh, so let me just play a little bit for you. So, <laughs> you'll see how it goes. It's easier for me to go down and up <laughs> just because I worked it a little bit. And of course, there is the kind of risk because you tend to, oh my god, what if I'm gonna miss? No, I have to, you know, again, make this compulsive tension, but again, you have to just take a risk here. That's about it and I'll see you soon. Bye bye.